G'day, how you doing? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube channel here where I teach beginners how to paint in acrylic. And I try and teach them those beautiful paintings that you can just sort of look at and go, wow, I like that, how'd you do it? Well, these videos are here to show you how you can do it. There's the size of the canvas there in inches. And I'll also put some colors going up the screen for you as well. That way this is designed for you to pause it, write them all down, watch the video a few times if you want to paint this particular painting and paint along with me. Even get some friends together and have a big painting party. Woo hoo, great stuff that would be. People have done it before and they've showed me their renditions and their party shots and it was great to see. All right. Uh, I did a knife painting the other day, and uh, or the other week, whenever this was aired, I don't know when this will be aired, and this is a painting of that knife painting. The knife painting was its own look, but I also want to paint the same subject matter as a beautiful painting a beginner can do, because it's such a beautiful thing to have on a wall, something like this, and it's going to have depth and all that stuff going on in it. So get on over here and let's get right into this. Now I've got my craft paint there and I'll put a puddle just next to it with some retarder. There's not a lot of blending in this sky, but um, you know, you can see how much I've got there. Some people ask, what's the ratio? I don't know, I just add what I feel on the day it needs. So see, I'm leaving a bit of puddle there because I'm feeling, hmm, maybe I put too much down. So I'm just governing how much I'm actually mixing into that pile of craft paint. See how crafty you can be with art? All right, I don't have to mix a whole lot, just a bit of it, see what I've done there. And we're gonna map in the sky area first. So I like to use this on the canvas cloth and get it all in that sky area so I can blend a beautiful, lovely sky with lots of bullshit going on inside it, okay? So I'll come down to me horizon line there. Now I'm going to stroke that left and right and get all the brush strokes out and have that surface nicely primed in there like that. So that's just craft paint and retarder. What's retarder? Retarder is an additive, a medium, an additive. A medium is an additive that slows down the drying time of acrylic paint. Now I'll put the sky colour in, I've got some red there and I've got some cerulean blue, so I'll, I'll get a bit of this first and I'll mix up a bit of um, hazy, polluted colour down in the atmosphere. I don't want it too purple though. Alright, so there's my horizon line. I want this sort of across and then scooting up into the sky like so. This is just that polluted area in the sky going right into the blue where it's going to be there's going to be blue there because everything's coming from here out over our head beautiful look at that okay i'm grabbing the cerulean blue for the sky color i've just washed my putter on a brush i've given it a severe flogging in the beading bucket okay i'll start at the top here get this color on there and then i'm going to crisscross it pick up more and get it down to that horizon colour there. I'll call it the horizon colour, the polluted horizon line. You ever looked at the sky in the evening and you see that hazy, purpley, hazy colour there? It's just adding that realism to your painting. Now it is evening time, so we do have a bit of darker value in our sky. Now I'm stroking that left and right. And I'm going to merge that with that hazy colour down there, just like that. Beautiful. Now these aren't fluffy white clouds. I'm going to grab some Quinacridone magenta and mix it with my grey. These are like evening casted clouds with the shadow behind them. So we've got that grey. I'm going to need more of that actually. It's not quite enough. And I'm going to need another tube of that grey. I thought I bought one the other day when I went to the art shop, but obviously not. So we want this pretty bluey grey. Let's grab a bit of blue in there. Just using the cerulean blue. There we go. We've got that bluey grey with the tinge of um, magenta in there, okay? Okay, and I want to get, well, I'll, I'll get some just floating out here. If you saw the knife painting, you'll know roughly how the sky looked in there. Well, that's how this one's going to look. Okay, is this some beautiful long 
clouds here. I'll grab my blending brush and we'll quickly soften these into that sky colour there, just like that. Leaving some dark bits there, particularly the tops there. Sorry, the camera wasn't on. I'm just adding more clouds here with this blue or grey colour. I don't know how far I got done without the camera on. So I'm just blending these, sitting them down into the sky and pulling them out into that direction all over there at the two o'clock position. Okay, I'm going to add some more. Just something up here coming off the painting there. Very dark sky because the sun's gone down past the horizon now. So there's no bright sunshine here really, but it's still light in the twilight zone. Probably have something down in here. Something on the horizon scooting up there. There we go, just something there. You've got to wipe the brush because I'm picking up there. Yeah, I put too much up there where I didn't want it, but anyway. Okay, so I've got some white and I'm just going to lighten some of this with a bit of the magenta in there. Yeah, just a little bit, just govern that. And this is going to be our yumminess colour. Add the white there. Come on, get in there, you. Something distinctively different than what's up there. And I just want to gently put some lighter bits around some of this cloud here, where I feel the light might be still hitting it. Let's hope the camera's picking up this different value of colour because it looks good in the painting. But I'm just sitting it down in there. And we've got bits of it all in here. Join it onto those darker body of clouds you've got there. Don't leave gaps between it, okay? That way when you look at it, someone's going to go, wow, I like that. Look at that. Like it. Love it. It's just pretty much like the yumminess, but different colour values, you know? Where else can we use some? Maybe some over here, raiding in and out of all this bit here. Okay. There we go. That can do it. We can keep going with clouds till the cows come home, eh? You just got to know when to stop. All right, so that'll do it. Okay, that can dry. I've got my brush cleaned. Again, I'll put it on right now. We'll put the water half in. So back down to this craft white. I don't need too much of that retarder because water is not as hard to blend and demanding as what a sky is in my opinion because the sky you've got a lot of individual clouds you're trying to blend. So we'll get this mapped in all the way across our bottom area there. And this is just going to give us something to merge our sky colours into the water with and do a bit of slight waterfying. I like to waterfy my colours, make them look like they're watery. I'll get that in there like so. Now picking up that magenta into this colour here that I had mixed, I'll put some water over that just in case I lose it. Uh, I'll just get the reflections. So this half here, it's probably a little bit different but it doesn't matter. Just something there like that. We're just going to get the reflections into the water. Doesn't matter if it's a different value. I'm going to wipe that brush, pick up this bluey colour. I'll actually I'll add some more cerulean blue to that. And we'll get our water onto that white. Get it to your colour there. Okay now pull it across with the tip of this brush and merge that purpley colour in with it somewhere just like that. Now I want some of this darker purpley colour here we had for the clouds and we'll get some bodies of that in there just like so. I can use what's on the fan brush as well, there's quite a bit on there. Okay there we go. 
and we'll just water fly that left and right left and right there we go now mixing some cerulean blue with that magenta there adding some this leftover white here because it's in the background so it's very pale it's just i can use this color here now it's got atmosphere between you and it okay so we'll just get a slight mountain in the background there on this side over here so it's pretty much in this vicinity very pale high enough in front of the trees that we're going to put in front of it okay so high enough for that and i don't want to scratch too deep because under here i'm being mindful there is retarded paint under here okay so pretty much to there get a bit more mountainy looking there doesn't matter if it's furry and hairy looking now i'll add a bit more white to that if i can just to make the bottom of that more pale there we go i'm just going to stamp it in this is just slight slight subtle detail here there we go there we go now i'll give that a bit of a slight dry so we can detail in front of it but i just wanted that in the background now i have forest green i'm just dampening my brush and we'll get that in front I want to get the horizon line on first so I'm just dampening my brush a bit so it's reasonably inky and then we want a little bit of black in this just to give it a very black green there there we go beautiful grab your bullshit stick and we want to get the bottom horizon line here reasonably level which is about here right across there wow look at that got it got it in one pass what a great stick that is okay i needed a bit more i forgot to go a bit further than that all the way out to here at least so the bottom of that line is straight and then we're going to add height to that coming in front of that bunch of mountains we put on there but just leaving that bit of white we put there to add distance between them and then now it can come a bit bigger doesn't matter if it's going over I'm going to get a smaller brush and add detail to the top of this row of trees that I'm putting on okay I want to get a slight reflection of this coming down so I'm just going to I'm leaving a thin line out there because it's you know you get that mirage work it out where it's thicker and thin you can use your bullshit stick for this because see how crooked my mirage line is going that little gap in between it gives it a wickedly good effect so what i'll do is i'll get that straight with me bullshit stick watch this now we'll reload the brush get it out here let's get you all the way out there get you done nicely like that there we go get it straight use your stick to get it straight okay that's good enough move the stick away and then just gently Pull it down to the appropriate height matching what's up top there just in a pull down mode okay and join it to that line don't have the line underneath showing if you can help it now if anything this needs to be darker green a bit of dark in there and that's it i'm adding more black because i feel it's too green Okay. now i've got a small soft brush and i've got some cad yellow light and sap green i'm just going to create a not too bright I'll, I'll find the right value that it's going to suit out there and we'll get something to break it up leaving any dark at the bottom area so i'm just going to let's as an example put some there we go that's a little bit better it's just subtle can you see the difference that it's made 
and this is just slight detail out there but leave the dark and we can pull some of this down as you do it just pull it down like that into the water and we'll come along just here and there all over the place don't go up don't map the whole lot in with this because it's in the distance remember pulling these down just like that I mean this is a lot of detail for out there but it is what it is get carried away now I'll grab a little bit more with some yellow just to put those distinctive little features that I like to add in reflections and what I mean by that is I might want something a bit brighter there for some reason and maybe here just like that and just something I can put in my reflection just so it's making the reflection stand out I like doing this at times now I'm going to grab a bigger brush and I'm going to grab this forest green again and I'm going to start with I want it black green very very black green I don't want it black and I don't want it just green I want it black green so I'm mixing the forest green into that and it's going to come from about here about that point there and this is a closer mass of trees coming up to about here somewhere so what I'll do is I'll just put the canopy of the trees in first get the top done and then I'll block it into the horizon line so I love using these fill bits they give beautiful treetop canopy shapes like little umbrellas get it Turn your brush around, manipulate it in there. And I'm going to bring that down to that point where I started off, which is about here somewhere. It's a real big piece of tree here. So now I'll wet that paint a bit more. And I'll just stamp this in. Now, I don't want to brush it in because I'm remembering there's retarded paint under there. And you don't want to start lifting it. So I'll get this all the way out to there, like so. Now it's important where you join this hard line to this soft canopy top line, you've got to sort of filter it through each other. Go up there, come back down in here, merge it. You're, you're scrumbling it, but in a dabbing on and off motion, okay? And it just helps. But be very mindful that that retarded paint underneath can lift if you're too, too aggressive. That's why sometimes you might have seen me, I mask this area up. And if you're smart, if you've watched this video a few times before you paint along with it, this area you want to paint your trees in, mask it up first, sketch it onto the canvas and then mask it up first so you won't have the problem of lifting the under paint. Now we just got to add the reflections. So what I will do is see this height from the horizon line you don't have to go exact that far down you can if you want but some of them can be obscured i'm going to go about there i'm going to do this edge of the reflection first okay so i'll come a bit above it and it's coming up there about there okay now i'm going to go on it and try and pull it downwards in just a downward motion okay bang done get that to the edge there all right and then we'll go along again, a bit along here, just a bit, and then scratch it down. Very easy, step-by-step -step detailing realistic reflections in your water. Come along here, about there, stop, pull them down. Okay, and you want those nice edges to look like a comb, scratchy and hairy, okay? And we'll bring it up to about there and up to there where we're meeting there and then bring that down, scratch it down like that. Now we can gently just put it on and finish that side with strokes like that, okay? Put it on again, 
stamping it on because I don't want to brush too aggressive. A bit at a time, done a bit at a time, pull them down. You can see the scratch marks in the reflection side. That's all it is. Again, damp it on. See, I've done the hard bit of where it's got to go. Now I'm just blocking it in, which is the easy bit. And these reflections look quite sharp once they're done. I've dried that, and just to be fussy, I'm just adding a few little more elements, like some bigger, taller trees here, some kind of palm pine or whatever, just something like that. Just something so we can have a distinct shadow in the water there, okay? Just something like that. I've done one there off camera, and now I want to just get that roughly scratched in. So I'm starting from there, and I'm gonna scratch it right down in a very straight line. Now see there, see that little bit of white? That was the underneath paint trying to lift the retarder so you don't scratch too heavy. There we go. Just something to add extra value to our painting there, okay? All right, I've just grabbed my small filbert and I want just the black now. I'll get that a little bit damp. or oh, not too damp, Ian. And we want to just subtly add some depth into that bank of trees there. So when we highlight it, it's going to pop, okay? So this is just to go across the horizon line and filter up and down within the foliage and the shadow there. So this will stand out, dancing that on. Bring some of it up here and there, just wherever. And the same in the reflection. You really need it in the reflection as well if you don't and you've finished your painting you're going to think something's not quite right and that's all that is to it come across the middle there filter it up and wherever you filter it up do the same in the water there and it just makes for a beautiful lovely kind of realistic looking painting a beginner can achieve okay and it's so good to know that beginners can do stuff like this Nothing is beyond what you can do. You can always do something if you put your mind to it and practice enough, okay? Okay. It's up here somewhere. Now we're going to highlight it. Now try not to get caught up in the process of having to highlight everything. These taller ones here, I want to keep them darker than what's in front, but I'm going to add a little bit of sap green to highlight them, but they're still going to have that dark look compared to the other colours. So I've just got a small brush and my sap green there. I will put the slightest of yellow just to turn the headlights on. And these trees will be just detailed. Well, I'm just using a little brush and you should be able to see, look at this how easy it is, the most daintiest. Little colors there, but they're highlighting it. Okay, some up there and some into these ones. I'm just trying to make scratchy little detaily bits and pieces within here. I want the point of it up there. Bits of detail. So this is still a dark colour, but the colour underneath it is dark enough to set it back. There we go. And add your reflections as you go. Just something like that. All right, I'm going to grab that cad yellow, pick up the forest green now, and I want to highlight that to highlight that bank of trees out there. I'll wet my brush so it's going to transfer nicely. And you want your brush nice and chiseled so you can highlight nice and sharp. And your highlights, the more fine you can get them and sharp, the more bullshit your painting's gonna look. So I wanna put bushes like this. I wanna bring that in, this is way in the background. So watch what I do here. I'll sort of bring this and I'm gonna come down 
here in front of that. Now I'm going swooping left and right, sort of like that. There we go. He's swooped in there, a bit more over here. And if anything, everything bows into the middle of the painting when doing this. Okay, I'll get this a little bit darker there. And then we've got this in front of them. This bit's in front now. Pushing those ones that I highlighted, these taller ones, back within the painting. And something down there. And see the finest you can get them, the better it looks. Push this back in front of that bush now. Just any old bush. I don't know what these bushes are, but they're just something I end up doing with the filbert brush. And I think they look, a pl look quite pleasing to the eye in the painting, I feel. Now there's your horizon line. You want to get this and kind of just dribble to there as you come down. And what's going to make this painting is when we just add those simple little, leaving darks there, those simple little highlights into the water's reflection. You watch how easy they are to achieve. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Now, just kind of pulling it down, pulling it down where where you feel you've put it. You're sitting it on and just pulling it down, making you, all that was highlighted there. It's all in a pulling motion, okay? Very easy to achieve. Up there, close to there. Load up your brush some more. Leaving the darks in the centres as well, like we did at the top. Okay. And that's all you need. It's not detailed, but it's when the painting's finished, it's just going to look like wet water. Get some right up there. Now, moving right along, this bit here where we put in front of that, that's where we want to use this colour as well. And sit that background back. Just like that and let's put this forward and then the same with the reflections down there and then we'll just finish this color off within this landmass of trees I mean you can look at a reference and try and copy the trees exact but I feel for a beginner you can come undone like that just do your strokes as trees that you know how until you've advanced and then you can start mastering perfection. But this is the basics. Now I've dried that. Now I want some kind of grass, little land bank in there. And the best way I like to go about that is that paint that I was just using is here. I'll wet my brush a bit more. Okay. Now, whatever's in my brush, it's pretty well enough. We want a nice green, limey, lemony looking lawn. Okay. So we'll get some of this, get it inked up enough, and then I'm going to use a small round brush just to line it in thick and thin here and now. I have done this in past videos. Check out the links in the description below my videos. You can just see over 360 videos there what I've done. And I'm going to grab this one, little script liner around. Little script liner, it's quite long. Grab your bullshit stick, find your horizon line, and you just sort of rest on your stick Come across your horizon line and you come thin, thick. Twist this brush as you go, keeping it level. That's what the stick's doing. And it can hide under there. It doesn't have to go all the way across. Just like that, okay, see? And then we can pick up some more and probably put another one somewhere here. Keeping it level and then come thick, twisting it. coming there and just look at the difference of that done to your painting now I've just got a small detailed flat brush and the top half of this I'm just stamping some little you know getting rid of that hard line because you want that looking like it's grassing up into the bush there the trees and whatnot so just something like that Okay, so we've got our 
trees we highlighted it with that we've got the lawn there so now i want to get some of this color here and lighten this up a bit more just to highlight certain little sections of our trees above that lawn we just put in there okay so we'll come along and you don't want this one to clash with that lawn you just put there i want to get something in front of there just like that I'm just going to have a look in my monitor just to make sure that's not clashing. It's not too bad. Just little bits here and there in front of it, bringing some of these trees forward. And scratch the reflection down at the same time. Yeah, they're very subtle. You don't want them too bright. I'm gonna put something here, like in front of all of that. This is like it's in front. Leaving the darks within this mass you're painting on as well though. It's very important to manage your brush strokes. And we'll highlight that body of paint as well. Look at that, see? And that's gonna stand out. This one here can stand out a little bit more, so can that one. I'm liking what I see here. I could sort of see this coming down in front of there, radiating back, pick up more. So you're actually painting onto the canvas, some of this here, all there. And what I love to do, see that black? I just love to dribble some over that black. Let it dribble over there like that. And then the magic is putting that in the reflections as well. Making sure that they're vibrant enough to stand out. And that's how easy it is to do bullshit reflections, eh? Wasn't too hard. I'm seeing about here somewhere. There we go. Scratch it down. Now this one here I want to brighten up a bit more. It didn't seem too bright there. Scratch it all down. There we go. Just for those, if you want to, put some little trunks here. I've just got some white and burn umber, okay? And I might put one very skinny back in the forest. And then I might put one right there, which I'll have to join up to something. See, they're just set backwards and forwards from each other, okay? We'll put something here. and then go over that green a bit, some of, some of them. Just so it's not a straight line of trunks. There we go. And of course, if they're visual enough, just get the subtlest of them in the water as well. So just to finish it off, because it's a lake, people go water skiing or something, I want to put a couple of rocks here. Just simply using burnt umber, maybe a little bit of black in it, for the base colour of the rock. Not too many, I want one about here, so I'm going to go, I'll do me, me flat part of it there, and bring the rock up wherever I want it flat along the bottom and then just gingerly pull that down like that okay 
Let's do another one somewhere. It's very, where is that one? Oh, it's right there. Very hard to see. We'll put one about here somewhere. Nice. Big stones in the water. Get it straight across there and then just pull it down. It's important to pull it down. Now I've added some white into that paint. Now that rock that we put on and scratched down like this, it's important to keep at least that bit dark and then just highlight it and scratch the highlights down. I've dried what's on the canvas. Now where's me rock? Here we go here. We don't want much on the brush actually. We want it very... detail it so simply like that and then from about the water's edge pull that down see how we go with this one get it right over that green area there To the water, to the water. Like I said, leave that centre bottom dark and then from that dark bit, pull this down into the water. There's this tiny one right here. So what I'm going to do is just pull his reflection down first and then find his top. Get the edge of it to the water. I've just added a little bit of white. Now I'm going to just slightly get the very top of that detailed onto that other colour and a bit of that resembling in the water as well. Just like that. Break it up. Practice little detail rocks like this, little additives you can put into the paintings. You can probably get a bit of cardboard or paper or something and just paint additives on it. You can call it your additive chart. And when you're doing a landscape like this, you can think, hmm, what have I got on my additive chart there? And you can just add those little elements in there. All right, now just to finish that off, we're just going to put our film of water on it. So what I do, I grab some titanium white on a decent sharp flat brush. Okay, that's plenty of white within it. And then I want to mix that with my glaze medium, okay. And this will make that white very see-through, transparent. And all the way out there, we're not going to go and get a knife and put big white lines everywhere. We just want to, in between there, get some water movement that's a bit too there we go around these rocks the water's kissing the rocks like that i would like to bring the corner of my brush over that now there we go because this is transparent as paint but will be and see just out there against the lawn you want some water, film of water kissing that as well, coming out. And you can use this, we'll get them straight for God's sake. Sorry for cursing there. And just sink those reflections down with some film of water like that. See, so that's too much white in there. But this just adds nice some of that against there. There we go, and sink our reflections down, just like that. Probably don't need too much out here, but I'm just gonna put like a, a white film. There we go, something like that. Something kissing, maybe here.
Okay, that's pretty much it. I'm going to whack a frame on that and see how she looks. Beautiful. Not too shabby, is it, in a frame? Got a nice water reflective landscape, or well, waterscape with beautiful reflections and an overcast or an evening ending sky, okay? And just remember, you can do that. Thank you for watching. Be sure to look at the links below the video. There's quite a few there. And if you like what you saw today, you make sure you tell your friends. But if you don't like what you've seen today, you tell everybody, okay? Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.